In this video, we are going to look at partial derivatives. So on this first one, they're asking us to derive z, and they're telling us with respect to x. So if there are other variables present, such as the y in this case, you treat them just like you would a constant. So we're deriving everything with respect to x, and you're treating everything else like a constant. So on our first term, this is just a normal 4x cubed, so the derivative of 4x cubed with respect to x would be 12x squared. Now, when we come to the second term, we're deriving with respect to x, so you're going to treat the 8y just like you would a constant. So the derivative of x squared would become 2x, and then, of course, it's multiplied by the 8 and the y because you're treating that just like a constant. So for that term, 2 times 8 would give you a 16, and then we have x times y. And then on the last term, since there's not an x present, you're, you derive it just like you would a constant, and the derivative of a constant is just 0. So my final derivative of z with respect to x would be the 12x squared plus 16xy. All right, on this next problem, they're telling you here that you're going to derive it with respect to x, and then this time they're giving us a value for x as well as y, so in the end we'll plug those in. So let's first take the derivative of function f with respect to x. And so again, remember the 8 and the y you treat like a constant. So the derivative of the x squared would be a 2x. It's then multiplied by the 8 times the y. So 2 times 8 would be 16. And then you have the x times the y. And then when we come to this term, again, the 2y cubed is just like a constant. And so when we take the derivative of just x to the first, we just get a 1. And so... And don't forget the minus that was there. So 1 times the 2y cubed would give us 2y cubed. So now we're going to evaluate that for the value of x and y that they gave us. So we're going to have a 16 times a 5 times a 3. And then we have minus a 2 times a 3 to the third. So 16 times 5 times 3 will give us 240. 3 cubed would be 27 times 2 is 54. So when I take 240 and I subtract 54, I'm left with 186. All right, so notice on this last one, we again are deriving with respect to x. This time we're going to have to use a quotient rule. And then we're also going to plug in at the end the values x equal 2 and y is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to start first with just the derivative of function f with respect to x. So with the quotient rule, we take the derivative of the top first. So remember you're treating the 4 and the y like a constant. The derivative of the x to the first is just 1. So my derivative of the top, I say, is 4y multiplied by the bottom, so 1 plus x squared y squared, and then minus, you take the derivative of the bottom, so derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of x squared with respect to x would be a 2x, and then you're just bringing the y squared along like a constant, and then that's multiplied by the top, and then all of that is divided by the bottom squared. Now, since you're plugging in, if you wanted, you could just go straight to plugging in and uh, get on your calcul calculator as opposed to simplifying. So on top, we're going to have a 4 times my y is negative 1. And then I'll have a 1 plus my x is 2. So that'll be a 2 squared, negative 1 squared. And then we have minus a 2 times 2 times negative 1 squared times a 4, times a 2, times a negative 1, and then all divided by 1 plus 2 squared, negative 1 squared, and then that whole thing squared. And so when you simplify all of this first part, 
I got negative 20 minus the second part. I got a negative 32, so that'll turn into plus positive. And then on the bottom, I got 25. And so you end up with 12 over 25.